the Darth Vader mask. So this right here is three prints. You can see the back, and then there's the lower jaw, and then the face. So what I'm going to do with this Darth Vader one is I'm going to primer it and then wet sand it. That's it. I, I glued the bottom chin to the upper because that's obviously going to be one piece. The dome is in five or six pieces, the top part of it, and so that'll all be glued together, but it'll be the front face, the back plate, and then the dome. Three different pieces that'll all be held together. And now that it's primed, you can really see the detail. See, I sanded the other one before priming it at all. And it was a lot less of the 3D marks. I'm just going to primer this, and I'm going to take some wet, real light sandpaper, real high grit, and I'm going to wet sandpaper it. I'm making the front part of the helmet right now. Look how thick this thing is. This thing's like a shoulder blade bone. No joke. Let me show you how. I mean, it's not just, you know, hollow on the inside. I'll, let me show you how thick this thing is. Since it's white, you can see the inside of it here. You see that? Isn't that pretty cool? The other one being made right here. And this is a better view of it. Wait how it comes out. This is the hole inside of that big, thick part, and, I mean, it does this the entire way up. So, isn't that crazy? I've got the front kind of taped on, kind of how it's going to go. Just to kind of show you. Just so I can have an idea of where it's going to be. Here's the top of the head. I started having to use a brand new roller. PLA. The only thing I have a brand new roller in is black. I probably could have made the top with the rest of this. This is how much white I have. I just wanted to make sure I had some white left. Uh, but that mask right there, what you just seen, that's all I've used this on. I mean, this was a, an entire roll, which sticks a little, you know, more up. Well, minus this part. Yeah. And it shows you how much it's used. I wanted to do the whole thing in white. I should have ordered another deal of white PLA and just waited, but I just don't want to wait. I want to get this done in front of it. What I've been doing, as you can see here, this one doesn't have any support in it, so I'm trying it out because these pieces are thick enough. The rest of the pieces that I'm putting are thick enough that uh, I'm positioning these in a way that they shouldn't need support. So this is the first one that I'm testing. These actually I, I put in the thing to have support and they didn't actually need any support. The first one I printed had a little kind of one little bar of support going up. So I took it off of this one, saved myself 30 minutes. Uh, and then I took it off completely from this one. This one's supposed to have a big old huge spot right here going all the way up. And it changed it from I think this says it's going to take like 11.47 or something like that. And originally it was going to take, with the support, it was going to take uh, 19, 19 and a half hours. It was going to take 19 and a half hours. So, it shows you the difference with and without support. I hope this turns out right, which it should. Even if it has a little bit of hanging down over the ledge in the front, it's going to be on the, on the under, underneath because See how thick that is? It's going to work its way all the way around. And it should be just fine on the outside. So in the very last stages of this, and I'm so worried about this not having supports on it, I've just been watching it. It's at uh, 81%. And right now is when it's supposed to take a real hardcore deep roll in. What? Doing the job so far, you can tell when the extruder gets over the top that it's wavering a little. But like I said, I think the outside of the dome is going to be just fine. 
you can tell where it all started. That line right there, it's all spaced out a little more. When you kind of go on the inside, you can really tell where it's having trouble. But I think it's going to turn out just fine. Literally nothing Bondo can fix. Just a little tiny bit of Bondo. So I got the helmet, I used uh, some wood filler first, and then I didn't think that that did the job, so I went ahead and took some Bondo, nasty smelly fumey stuff, and went back over all the, the spots, but you can tell that white right there is the wood filler. I'll show you guys a picture of this. Uh, I got it from Walmart, it said plastic wood filler, so I was thinking, you know, plastic? It might be like a plastic mix, so it might work really good on plastic. And it actually did, it just didn't dry quick enough for me, but if you look really close, well, you, I'm not going to be able to look close enough with this, just, you can see where all that white is, I mean, it just filled in the spots good, I could have done good with that, the bottle was just extra, just an extra hold, I thought about putting some straps, uh, going in here and going around, but this is so flimsy, it's such, it's such a thin piece, and it's made out of PLA, that I just, I don't want to mess it up by putting some straps on it and then busting a spot where the straps are. So it's just going to be better to put a big, thick piece of Velcro on it. First coat of primer. I got the mask back here. But I wet sanded it and then whenever I spray painted it, I didn't get all the wet sand off. And so it caused this whole effect to happen. So I'm waiting for it to dry and then I gotta re-sand it and then I'm gonna have to take it in and wipe it off and dry it real, real quick. And this is the back piece. While I was wet sanding the mask, I had primered this and I was kind of stepping over the top of it. And while it was still wet, I dripped some water on it. So, it's got a few spots. I gotta make sure and clean that up and clean the mask up. So, I just gotta wait for the, them both to dry, then I'm gonna wet sand them and then clean them off again. 